This is part one of The Unblinking Eye, Civil War Photography. I'm Todd Duran, Professor of Graphic Design at Spring Hill College, and you can find more about me and my students at designmylife.org. Text for this lecture was adapted from the Library of Congress website and from Top 20 Great U.S. Civil War Photographs. In 1861, the Civil War began. This war had over 3 million Americans fighting each other, and by its end, 625,000 were dead, twice as many as in World War I. The Civil War was the first war to be so extensively covered by photographers. For the first time, many soldiers could afford to have an image made of themselves before they went off to fight. During the Civil War, the process of taking photographs was slow and cumbersome. Two photographers were required. One would mix chemicals, coat a glass plate, let it dry, and sensitize it in darkness in a bath solution. By the way, all this was happening in a kind of specially made covered wagon. It would then be placed in a holder and inserted in the camera, while the second photographer set up the camera, framed the shot, and focused the large wooden camera on a tripod. Exposure and development had to be done quickly and developed back in the wagon darkroom. The fragile glass plate had to be carefully packed and moved around, all while a war was going on. Matthew Brady was the official government photographer for the Civil War, and he decided to document the Civil War on a grand scale by bringing his photographic studio right onto the battlefields. Despite the obvious dangers, financial risk, and discouragement of his friends, Brady is later quoted as saying, I had to go. A spirit in my feet said go, and I went. His first popular photographs of the conflict were at the first battle of Bull Run, in which he got so close to the action that he only just avoided being captured. There were dozens of photographers under Brady. Here are the names of a few. There were southern photographers as well as photographers in the north. Brady employed Alexander Gardner, Timothy H. O'Sullivan, William Powell, and 19 other men, each with his own van or wagon. They spread out to cover different parts of the war, a war that nobody expected to amount to much. They were wrong. This war-torn battlefield was where Brady and his crew first came under enemy fire. On July 21, 1861, Brady drove his wagon out to the entrenchments, approaching Captain John Cooper to ask if he could take a photograph. The Confederates were preparing for battle, and seeing Brady's wagon moving, they let, lo let loose bombarding Cooper's battery. Brady was almost killed at Bull Run, and in the confusion got lost for three days, eventually making his way to Washington, nearly dead from starvation. In this photograph, a quartet of black children wearing army hats, at least they look like children, are sitting in the ruins of Circular Church on Meeting Street in Charleston, birthplace of the secession. If the dating on this photo is correct, then it was taken during the Battle of Nashville, December 15th through 16th, 1864. It shows the outer edge of the Union lines. And Nashville is actually my hometown, and I have no idea where this was taken, uh, but it is kind of interesting that there was such a huge battle there. Look at the number of soldiers, and look at the, the tents. I mean, they stretch out far into the distance. Few people realize how many uh, black soldiers actually participated in the, in the Civil War. Men and non-combatants are seen here from Company E, the 4th U.S. Colored Infantry at Fort Lincoln, Washington, D.C. The bottom rail is on top as these soldiers were among the 180,000 black men who served in the Union Army during the war and helped deliver ultimate victory. It looks like this looks like a scene from World War I, but this photograph shows dead Confederates in the trenches at Petersburg, Virginia in 1865. This photograph, printed from a cracked negative, 
shows fugitive slaves crossing the Rappahannock River toward the north in August 1862. And this photograph shows what happens when an ammunition train goes boom. George Bernard saw the results when he photographed the remains of the Confederate States of America General Hood's 28-car ammunition train, which Hood's retreating army burned after losing Atlanta to Sherman in September 1864. After 40 days of continuous combat, Ulysses S. Grant, General of the Union Forces, is shown in this photograph. It was taken a few days after his unfortunate assault at Cold Harbor. The strain on his face is palpable. By the time this photo was taken, Grant and Lee had lost a combined 80,000 men at the Wilderness, Spotsylvania, North Anna, and at Cold Harbor. Stark's Brigade, Battle of Antietam, Alexander Gardner. Oh, I'm sorry, this is the Confederate dead shown at Stark's Brigade at the Battle of Antietam. Alexander Gardner photographed these dead rebels of Stark's Brigade of the Army of Northern Virginia where they all fell along the Hagerstown Turnpike. Gardner took this picture two days after the Battle of Antietam. Sharpsburg, Sharpsburg is what it was called in the Confederacy. Gardner's boss, Matthew Brady, took these photographs and made them into a display for the public, one that shocked people who had never before seen the war dead, which was practically everyone. This 1862 photo of a hospital was taken by James Gibson of a field hospital at Savage Station, Virginia during the Seven Days Campaign east of Richmond. Here's a photograph taken uh, just after Gettysburg's, uh, Lincoln's famous Gettysburg Address, November 19, 1863. His remarks were very short and the photographer had barely gotten re ready when Lincoln was finished. So, as a result, we have this blurry uh, photograph as the only photograph of this historic event. And you can barely recognize Lincoln here, but he's the tall person in the hat right here. That concludes the end of part one.